Hi, everybody. This is Donna Prosser with the Patient Safety Movement Foundation here to bring you another COVID-19 update. Today, we're going to be talking about improving communication with hospitalized patients. And I'm very excited to be joined today by, uh, by Dr. Todd Leckie and by Dr. Rachel Grimaldi, both from the United Kingdom. Welcome, and, and thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you. I'd love for you to tell us a little bit about yourself. Can we start with Rachel? Yeah, so I'm Rachel Grimaldi. I'm an NHS anaesthetist and founder of CardMedic, um, which we'll be talking a bit about today, um, which is a communication tool to help improve uh, communication through the PPE barrier. Excellent. Thank you. And Todd, tell us a bit about yourself. Uh, so I'm uh, Todd. I'm also an NHS anaesthetist, um, and I've got some kind of first-hand experience of using CardMedic um, in my clinical practice, working in anaesthetics and intensive care. Great. Well, this is a really exciting tool. And Rachel, um, I know that you, um, you created this not that long ago. Can you tell us a little bit about what inspired you to create it and tell us a little bit about the product? Sure. So um, I am currently on maternity leave. Uh, I've been desperate to get back to work and do something to help. Unfortunately, I can't be on the front line, but I've been keeping up to date with friends and colleagues working um, at the front line and been reading the news avidly. So I came across an article about a patient who'd been to the ICU with coronavirus, um, felt terrified because he couldn't understand what the staff were saying to him through the PPE. Um, so the face masks, the visor, the hoods, etc. Um, and so I thought about surely there's a simple way um, that staff could just write down their message on a piece of paper and show it to the patient, um, which happens anyway in intensive care settings. Um, but it's unsustainable in the current pandemic as a an, as a communication tool on a daily basis. So I thought about maybe an A to Z list or A to Z list of topics. Um, as to, for example, if I were to be looking after a patient under these circumstances, what would I be talking to them about? I've got experience in anesthetics and critical care over the last decade. Um, so I just thought of the common topics that um, I might want to address, anything from airway to allergies to um, any issues with breathing, medications, in, in case they needed an operation. And I just wrote down um, all the content um, within 72 hours we'd launched a website cardmedic.com um, and just thought initially I would share it with some friends and then a few days later joined Twitter and it kind of went from there so uh, it, it's essentially a website it's also available as an app on Google Play or Apple Store um, it's all free um, and you just visit it you scroll through the list decide which topic you'd like to talk to your patient about click on the topic, show the patient the screen, and then they can read it and then respond to you in return. Um, and then it's got lots of little extra features and things I can talk about as well, but that's, that's the kind of background to it and the basis for it. That's great. What an excellent tool. And, and Todd, what kind of communication were you experiencing in your organization that, in, that inspired you to, to start using this tool? Um, so with um, COVID-19, it's obviously a disease that predominantly affects the respiratory system and we have to provide um, ways um, to kind of support the patient's respiratory system. And, and one of the ways we do that is with something called non-invasive in ventilation, um, which is where we um, either use a mask or essentially a hood um, over the patient's head um, to provide increased rates of oxygen delivery. Um, and that's a very effective way to um, support a patient's breathing. Um, but kind of a side effect of that is that the patient um, uh, is uh, hearing can be affected because the, the flow rate, so the, the rates of the oxygen kind of flowing into the patient's face are very high and that can cause excess noise and impair a patient's hearing. So um, I think there's two issues with COVID-19. One, obviously we're wearing P um, uh, personal protective equipment so we're wearing a face mask a visor um, and that uh, inhibits some kind of non-verbal communication um, tools that we would normally have um, and then the second is obviously the patient can't hear um, as, nor as, as they would not ordinarily once they've um, started non-invasive ventilation so it's kind of it's addressing carb medic is addressing those two problems by providing um, a way to communicate with the patient that bypasses 
um, kind of the hearing um, and, and relies on kind of vid, uh, visual cues. Um, and also it, 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 um, it it's just provides real clarity. Um, so it's the, the um, prompts are very clear and concise. And I think that's what you need when you're treating a, a critically ill patient. Um, you know, they, um, uh, their ability to understand is often impaired due to that critical illness. And so, you know, if you have something that's very clear, concise and to the point um, that they can read, um, then that can convey um, a lot of information very quickly um, and help aid their understanding. And as Rachel says, hopefully mitigate any fear that they might be experiencing through, through the fact that they're not quite understanding what, what's going on. That's great. Now, how do you actually use it in the clinical setting? Do you bring the computer with the website up into the room or the, or do you bring the app into the room? Um, yeah, so I think we've been really lucky within the organization I work in, and I think this is reflective across um, the NHS within the UK, is um, we've had a, the provision of a lot of iPads and tablet devices, um, which have been able, because of infection control issues, um, devices that are in the kind of what we call the red area, so the area where patients with COVID-19 are, which are higher infectious um, infection risk, um, devices in that area can't leave the area. So what what a lot of organizations have done is they've invested in tablet devices like the iPad um, and then you can just you know log onto the internet use just a, you know a standard browser on any tablet device and, and access the card medic uh, website very quickly you know literally um, within 30 seconds um, and, you, and you're on the device and it's, it's a very simple clear um, website um, so you I think it's, it's very easy to navigate even if you have if you're not particularly familiar with the website you know the first time I used it I found what I needed very quickly great great now Rachel I know you're you're planning to study this further can you tell, tell us a little bit about what you're working on there yeah, so we are trying to um, demonstrate the effectiveness of Card Medicate improving communication through that barrier that the PP creates, exactly as Todd explained. So uh, I've partnered with the University of Brighton and Brighton and Sussex University Hospitals NHS Trust, and we have done a pilot study using 10 simulated patients to look at um, the effectiveness at Card Medic. Um, of card medic at improving communication and looking at the patient's experience and their anxiety levels and their level of understanding as well. So analysis is underway this week, but the preliminary results do show that that card medic does significantly improve the effectiveness of communicating. Um, as Todd said, a variety of topics, but just in a really simple, concise way. Uh, so the results of that will be out. Um, and then we're looking at partnering up with universities, uh, uh, sorry, ho university hospitals in the um, in the US uh, and also in Spain as well, big teaching hospitals to do co-pilot studies there um, to assess the same kind of thing. Great. And, and Todd, um, what lessons do you think that clinicians can take from the communication issues we're having during this pandemic? Uh, so I think... Uh, probably the, the first is how reliant we are on kind of nonverbal communication. So the importance of, you know, when you're communicating with a patient, you know, establishing eye contact and, you know, um, being aware of, of the limitations that wearing PPE kind of involves because you lose, I think, you know, a, a significant spectrum of, of your ability to communicate. Um, so that that's the first thing. And, I, and then I think the second is just how much, complex information we try to impart on critically unwell patients um, in a very short period of time um, when we're trying to you know treat assess them and treat them um, uh, uh, certainly early on in their in their journey in the hospital when they're kind of first coming into hospital and there's a lot going on very quickly so I think card medics very useful at, at streamlining communication um, in those situations um, and I think it's, it's, it's not only kind of a practical tool that you can use when 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 you know seeing patients managing patients but also you know as an education tool just to think about some of the processes that you um, try to explain as a doctor um, and and I think card medic can act as kind of a, almost like a guide on, on best practice um, and, and and suggest you know how can you get across information um, in a concise and efficient way that isn't isn't overwhelming to the patient um, but kind of informs the patient and lets them feel that they've got some control and awareness of what's going on um, you know when they when they first come into hospital great Rachel um, what improvements or enhancements do you intend to make to card medic moving forward 
Well, I think we've we've got a lot of features already um, that are available that we're expanding on. So, for example, it is already translated into 10 languages. Um, and that's being done. Originally, that was a service donated by um, a company called Weglo. But we've now got another company, Language Connect, which are doing that professionally for us with humans. So it will be more accurate. And then I've got lots of members of the public who've also come forward to translate as well. And we're always looking for new people to help. Um, so there's now a system where they can go in, do your translations, and then it comes through us to quality check, and then it goes out. Um, so the translations are expanding. We are also working with um, the Royal Association for Deaf People, Signly, Sign Live, um, Helen Folks, uh, translator, and various other people who've come forward to um, generate lots of British sign language videos. So we're going to be incorporating the sign language side. And then I'm working with a group of speech and language therapists, learning disability nurses and communication specialists at creating a really accessible version of the website as well. So it has lots of images, illustrations and signs on it. Um, uh, so, so that will be in the next few weeks, hopefully we'll be launching the accessible side. Um, so those are the three big areas that we're working on. Uh, we've got version two of the app coming out shortly. Um, and we are going to be integrating those changes onto the website as well. So the features that we've got um, are where the clinician can upload their name and photo to the app or the website. You can take a selfie or you can upload something from your camera roll. And as Todd said, uh, a lot of that information is lost behind the mask. Uh, a lot of nonverbal communication, the face of who's looking after the patient, it's lost. So that can be made available and you can show your patient your picture and your name on your phone, um, where you're working, and um, the patient can see exactly who's looking after them behind the mask. So that's a really nice feature. And the other aspect that we're working really hard on is we've got a free note section. So whilst the website has a lot of content, there is a lot more to add. And there will be things on that might not be on the website that patients and staff might want to talk about. So that free note section is a place where the staff or the patients can type messages back and forth to each other and it can be translated. It can also be read aloud. So we have a read aloud function in the site for partially sighted or blind patients. So a patient who can't read for any reason or has visual impairment, the page can be read aloud to them. So we're, we're integrating that into that free text section. So it almost is, it's a translate app embedded within um, the, the site and the app itself. So you can have a, a conversation, we'll do speech to text, you can talk into the phone, it will automatically translate. So you can have an, without the need for a translator to be present, so you can have a translated conversation live uh, with, between staff and patient as well. So that's, that's what we're working on and that will come out in version two. So a, lo a lot more functionality to add um, and uh, hopefully really helpful features to come out and we're just constantly looking for feedback um, and we're, reviewing and revamping all the time we just need more hours hours in the day at the moment <laughs> <laughs> that's great what an excellent tool thank you. well thank you so much for being here today and sharing this great information we are we're going to share this with our network and we're going to uh, we'll share your your website you mentioned you were interested in feedback is there a place on your website where people can can share that yeah, absolutely. So you go to www.cardmedic.com and there's a section at the bottom that says contact us or there's an ideas page it's, that comes through to the same place. Um, or you can tweet at Cardmedic and, and get in touch or emails info at cardmedic.com. Great. And what about the app? If somebody was interested in that, can it be downloaded from your website? Um, there are, yep, there's links from the website. So there's a link to the Apple store and link to Google Play, or you can just go straight to the stores and you just type in Card Medic and it comes up there. So you can download it. It's all free. Everything is free. Great. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, that is an excellent tool. And I know that people across the world are going to be, um, are, are really going to be happy to use this. So thank you both for taking the time to talk with us today. And uh, I hope that we will have you back soon in a couple of months and tell us about what great enhancements you've made. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us. All right. Yeah, thank you.